For some, the journey through life takes them to where it began. That was the case for a son of a Filipino immigrant couple. On today's edition of Journey, EBC's Thomas I. Likeness tells us the story of Victor Kui, who has ended up as a top executive of his home city's professional football team. But before that happened, the journey through life takes him around the globe. Edmonton, Canada. Not exactly top of mind when it comes to a tourist destination. Not exactly well known globally. Canadian cities that generally come to mind are Vancouver, Toronto, Montreal. Edmonton? Well, it's affordable. Work is plentiful and good times. The climate? Beautiful in the summer. Not so great in the winter when temperatures can dip to minus 40 degrees for several days, even weeks at a time. But for Victor Kui, it is home. Home once again. He returned for family reasons, and the experience he picked up while away, while it landed him the top job in the front office of the Edmonton Elks of the Canadian Football League. But let's go back to the beginning. Victor was born in Edmonton. Over the years, he lived in many different parts of the world. He was his parents' first child. They'd come to Canada from the Philippines in the 1970s, seeking a better life. His dad, Victoriano, was an engineer. Victoriano's work with the Canadian Development Agency took the family to Africa. There, he worked on water purification projects. And that move, Victor was only six at the time. That move would set the stage for what would come later. And definitely those were my formative years from six till 12 years old or so and around that, around that period. And um, that really, uh, I think, made the world suddenly very small because going from Canada to Africa and um, in those times, we traveled a lot um, within Africa and outside of Africa with my parents. So I think at an early age, I was quite lucky to see a lot of different cultures and see a lot of different people and not be so fearful of moving around. It wasn't something that was scary to me. It was just something that was a normal part of life. Half a dozen years later, the family was back in Canada, in Edmonton. Now, at age 12, Victor was enrolled in a Canadian middle school. And for Victor, life changed. It was interesting. It was a bit of a, of a, of a culture shock for a young boy, I would say, if I remember it correctly. Because I remember one of the first things was that when I came back to Canada, I discovered that I was not white. <laughs> because in Africa, if you're not black, you're white. They called just everybody at that time, you were white. And they called me the white guy. And so all that time, growing up, I thought I was white. And then I came to Canada, to Edmonton, and, and people were like, you're not white. And I was, I remember being legitimately confused about it. Being virtually a newcomer in the country in which he was born, Victor had no circle of friends. How to fit in? The answer for him was sports. There's nothing quite like putting on a uniform that makes you feel part of a bigger family. And that was the experience that I first felt when I came back and I put on an Edmonton Eskimos jersey at, at that time and came to the stadium. It was the feeling that I felt when I put on a, uh, um, a uniform when I joined the Navy, when, when I turned 18. And I think it's a, a similar kind of feeling that I've continually tried to chase my whole life. Sports was the ticket to social acceptance. It was also the basis for what would become a very successful career, but not as an athlete. I've always I loved sports and loved um, participating in it and um, uh, have done sports my entire life. I just am not very good at it as an athlete. <laughs> So I love it. I just am not good enough to make a living out of it. So I had to figure out how to make a living out of it in some other capacity. That love for sports began at a young age. His dad introduced him to boxing. He saw it as a way for a 
Young boy to burn off all that excess energy of you. Like growing up in Africa, he had built a boxing ring in our backyard. So we just grew up doing combat sports. At age 18, Victor enlisted in the Navy. He says he felt the need for more discipline and the military was a way to get that. The Navy also paid for his university education, a degree in international politics. Victor also did postgraduate studies in business. And from there, it was off to Asia. His first job was in Malaysia, where he had one skill that no one else did. I was hired at this time because I had this magical skill set that nobody else had, which was the ability to create PowerPoint. <laughs> and and uh, nobody knew how to make PowerPoint presentations at that time. And that was the main skill that what they hired me for. Next was a move to the home of the Merlion, Singapore, and a five-year stint with sports broadcaster ESPN Star Sports. Victor's first job? Find the next multi-billion dollar sports opportunity that could be marketed in Asia. He looked at football, basketball, tennis, golf, darts, cheerleading, even marching bands, you name it, he studied it. Oh, what an on-the-job education. And I just had this fantastic opportunity to do the due diligence on every single sport that was in the world and understand what made that sport successful, the business fundamentals of it, um, its revenue, where their expenses and their risks were. One of the opportunities Victor suggested was mixed martial arts. ESPN? Well, less than enthusiastic. The company was run a lot of, um, by a lot of traditional British people or former British colonies, like people from India. And what they really understood was cricket. They really understood cricket and they really understood soccer. And so if you were presenting a business plan that had cricket in it, they were just were not interested. Victor eventually left ESPN. He found a business partner. They started a company, called it One Championship. The mission? Promote martial arts Asian style. The going was tough, it took a lot of persistence, but eventually they tasted success. Fast forward to 2020. Shortly after the world rings in the new year, the pandemic is declared. Globally, everything pretty much is shut down. Eventually, Victor makes the decision to leave Singapore and move his family back to Edmonton. Why did you decide to come back? A big part of it was, as my father got older, we decided that, you know, what would make my parents the happiest? How could we make these last years of my father's life, whose health was not as, as, as good, um, the best for him? And we thought of everywhere in the world that we could live that would make sense. And in the end, the, big, the biggest piece was being able to bring all of his grandchildren together so that he would be around them and be around family um, and that meant for my either my brother to move to Asia which he couldn't or meant for me to move to, to Edmonton. About the same time the city's pro football team the Edmonton Elks had cleaned house. The team was in shambles rebuilding after a disastrous 2021 season. And they needed someone at the top who could handle the business side of things. In January of this year came a job offer. The title? President and CEO. For Victor, well, the offer came at the right time. The fact of the matter is, had I had this opportunity two or three years earlier, it would have been too early for me. It would not have made sense because I still had so many initiatives going on with my business in Asia. Um, had it come two years from now, it would have been too late because I probably would have started another company or several other companies already. With his hands on the controls of the team's front office, Victor has really come full circle. He remembers back to 1984. That's when his father took him to his first Edmonton football game after the family moved back from Africa. He remembers wearing the team jersey at the time. He won a scholarship back in high school that was sponsored by the team. But did he ever think he would be involved with the Edmonton Elks? 
it seemed impossible for me for this this short Filipino chubby guy to to ever penetrate that world of 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 um, the CFL. I really didn't even understand how how you'd make those inroads into it and what you could do. Dreams do come true sometimes, and when they do, sometimes it's just in a different way. All because of the experience picked up while on the journey. For Journey, Stories of Filipinos in Canada, I'm Thomas I. Likeness. Join us next time here on Journey, Stories of Filipinos in Canada.